everybody, welcome back to our penultimate episode of Tool School. Today, we are gonna dive right in and we're gonna learn how to use a drill to drill a pilot hole and an impact driver to put in our screw. And by the end of our episode today, our box is gonna be assembled. So let's get started by just looking at these two tools because these two tools look kind of similar, like they could be cousins, but they have very different purposes. So this is a drill. This probably looks familiar to you. You may have a drill at your house. This is an impact driver, which looks similar. It's a little bit rarer. You may not have this tool. You may never have seen this tool ever, but they work best together. So a drill, its primary purpose is to drill holes. And so that's why you see I drilled my pilot hole, I have a drill bit in my drill. An impact driver is optimized for driving screws. That's easy to remember because it's called a driver like a screwdriver, so it's meant for putting in screws. A driver can also be called an impact driver or sometimes a hammer drill. Let me explain why this is the best tool for putting in screws. So a drill, tell me if this has happened to you. Many of you have probably used a drill to tighten screws. And let me guess, you've been putting in your screw with your drill and one of two things happened. One is you're putting in your screw and it pulled your arm in a funny way. That's one thing that can happen. The other thing is that you may end up stripping a screw head. I'm certain that has happened to some of you out there. That can happen because your drill doesn't really have a way of regulating its its spinning power. It just kind of spins and spins and spins. Even though a lot of drills have what's called a torque regulator up here, I can change how much torque I'm using, it just spins and spins and it'll spin until it strips your screw head. So enter the impact driver. The impact driver has a built-in mechanism that actually applies more torque in a hammering fashion. So instead of just spinning, it applies a sort of incremental force on your screw head. So as you're tightening it, it will not strip your screw head. It's great. It also makes a sound when I, I'm sure you heard it the first time, you'll hear it again. It sounds like a very loud woodpecker. So you can actually sound, hear the sound of the hammer as you're doing it. Okay, so if you do not have a driver at home, you can use your drill to put in screws. I just want to advise you against it, and if you can invest in both of these tools, they really do work best together. All right, so let's take a closer look at both of these tools, and then I'm gonna assemble my box. So let's come on in and take a look at our drill. So here's our drill. I always prefer a battery-powered, uncorded drill. Let's look at some of the key parts. So I have my battery down here, and my battery, depending on which brand you have, it should have a, a quick release button to insert. Then I also have up here, here's my trigger. And remember with the jigsaw, how if we pulled it a little bit, it went very slowly, and if we pulled it a lot, it went very fast. This is the same type of graduated trigger. So slow and fast, okay? Then I have this button here. This is my directional button. So I'm not sure if you could see this, but there's a small arrow on this button that's pointing forward. On the other side, this arrow is pointing backwards. So that's important because this is the button that dictates which way my bit is spinning. For most purposes, I wanna keep my drill spinning forward. So if you're right-handed, here's how I remember this. When I'm holding the drill with my right hand, if I'm right-handed, this finger, I always do a little finger check. I make sure that this button on my pointer finger side is pushed in. That means I'm going forward. Okay, then I also have this, let's see if I can turn it so you can see it. I have this collar that has numbers on it. This is how I can I can change the torque of my drill so I can tell it how hard I want it to turn before it lets off, lets off the gas on the screw. I actually like to just leave it in screw position all the way up at the top. This is, some drills may not even have this feature, so I think if you do have it, just leave it in what looks like the screw and I usually opt for the highest number, okay? And then the last thing is the chuck. This black part at the front, this is called the chuck. These little metal 
teeth are called jaws, and this is actually the piece that holds your bit. So there's the chuck, and then the jaws, and the bit. Let me just show you how to take in, or take out and put back in your drill bit. So if I am looking at my chuck, if I turn my chuck, if I'm looking straight at it, and I turn it counterclockwise, that's lefty loosey, I can open up my jaws, see how those jaws are opening? And I can pull my bit out. Let's watch how the jaws open and close. If I go righty-tighty, clockwise, my jaws tighten, right? And then lefty-loosey again, that's what opens them up. So I'm gonna put the same bit back in, center it right in the middle, and I'm gonna turn clockwise, righty-tighty, and tighten it down until it's nice and snug around my bit, okay? That is how we set up our drill. Let's look at the driver for comparison. Here's our driver. A lot of the same kinds of parts, right? The battery works in the same way. The trigger works in the same way. I have the same forward and backward switch. For my driver, I wanna be in forward position when I'm putting a screw in. And then if I mess up or need to take a screw out, I'm just gonna switch directions, right? So now my reverse button is pushed in. This is to take screws out. What do you notice that's different about the chuck area? This is a different mechanism to hold the bit. So this is actually called a collet. Some people will still call this a chuck, but it's technically a collet, C-O-L-L-E-T. And this is a different way of holding the bit. So this is much simpler actually to take out and put in your bits. The collet works like this. If I pull my collet outward, I can now put my bit in and out. So to put it back in, Pull my collet out, push the bit all the way in, and then release it, and now it's nice and snug in there, okay? Everything else is pretty much the same. Really quick thing about this bit. So most driver bits have this hexagonal stubby end. This type of bit is also the type of bit that you may need to put in your drill if you only have a drill, okay? So this type of bit works in both. Let's remind ourselves that this bit we're using today is a star bit, which matches the screws that we talked about yesterday. All right, great. Let's get set up to make our box to actually do the assembly. I have both my bits in and I'm ready to go. Okay, what do we need to do before we do anything? Safety check. So I have my hair tied back. I have my safety glasses. I don't have anything dangly. I have my sleeves pushed up. Nothing baggy or loose, and I got closed-toed shoes and pants. Check, 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 check. Great. So let's get set up to assemble our box. Feels like it's been forever. Here we go. Here's our pieces that we've cut and sanded. Let's just remind ourselves how this is being put together. I'm going to take these side pieces, and I'm going to make two L shapes like this. One that's going to go here, and one that's going to go here. That one's actually already clamped to my table two L's, then I'm gonna put those L's together, then I'm gonna attach that whole frame to my bottom piece. That's the order of operations that I'm gonna use. So let's get set up to do just that. I have one of my L's set up here already, clamped to the table, and when I put in that first screw at the beginning of the video, my work is actually done. So I'm gonna take this out so you can see it. So here's my first L that I've already assembled, okay? Let's set up the second L so we can do the same thing. I have two side pieces. I'm going to use my vise on my table to set one piece flush with the top of the table, then my other piece set right here on top. And I'm going to clamp the top piece. This is a little bit like a puzzle. You're going to have to find a way that works for you and in your home setup. Maybe you have a table like this, more likely you just have a flat, maybe you're at your dining room table, but do find a way to clamp it so everything is nice and secure. All right, so now we're ready to use our drill and driver. Quick thing about our drill. I mentioned that we're gonna drill a pilot hole first, right? Why do you think we need a hole? Why can't I just take my screw and put my screw right into this wood? There's a couple reasons. The primary reason is because I don't want the end of my wood to split. 
If I just put a screw straight into this wood, because it's so close to the end, it's likely to just split the end of my wood. It, the other reason is it's just harder. It's harder to start a screw into a blank piece of wood. It's much easier if I have a pilot hole, which is like a little tunnel, and then my screw knows exactly where to go. So my pilot hole bit, if we remember what we learned about screws, we looked at the shank size of the screw, that's the diameter of the, the central post, and I'm using a number eight screw, which is one and five eighths inches long. This is my screw. So I've chosen a bit where the diameter of my drill bit is just slightly smaller than the diameter of my shank. So this bit is actually 3 seconds of an inch. I really like using 3 seconds of an inch bit with a number eight screw. Okay, so I am going to put two screws in each of these joints, and here's how I'm gonna do that. When I am getting set up to use my drill, just like with the jigsaw, this is a two-handed tool, okay? So I'm always gonna have my non-dominant hand on the back, my dominant hand on the trigger. I'm also checking to make sure that my bit is vertical. I can't be like this, I can't be like this. My pilot hole is so important because it's guiding where my screw is gonna go. So I need to do a good job of setting a good hole. Okay, so I'm nice and vertical. This is also a helpful step to have a partner for, to be looking at the other side and making sure it's vertical in both directions, okay? I'm gonna double check that my bit is nice and tight, okay? And then I'm gonna pull my trigger all the way and I'm gonna go straight down and straight up in one motion with my forward button pushed in. So here we go. Down and up. And then I'm going to immediately put my screw in. I like to put my screw in immediately because if I do my second hole, who knows what could happen between this hole and this hole. Maybe something shifts and then nothing's lined up. So hole, screw. And same thing with the driver. I'm putting my left hand on the back and pushing. I'm gonna show you how to do that a little bit slower on the second screw. So, pilot hole, vertical, all the way down, all the way up. With the driver, you saw me do this just now, but I like to set my screw sort of lightly in place Make sure that your bit is locked into your screw. Non-dominant hand on top. And then I'm gonna start a little bit slowly just to get it locked in place, right? And then now I'm gonna push. And I'm gonna stop my screw right when the head is flush with the top of my wood, ready? Hear that hammering mechanism. Voila, right? So easy. So here's my other L. Now I have two L's and I'm going to put them together. So you'll remember from many videos ago that we did something called pinwheeling where we have each of our walls butting into the next. So if you can see the orientation here, each wall is butting into the next one, right? So this is my pinwheel pattern. So here's how I'm going to set up to connect my two L's. I'm going to find a position where everything is nice and lined up and I'm gonna clamp this entire box to my table. Like so. A little bit closer to the edge here. Okay, everything's lined up and clamp. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with my drill and driver. Pilot hole number one. In place, dominant hand, non-dominant hand here. Okay, second screw. Should move my screws closer, they feel very far away. Okay, okay. we only have one more side to connect. I'm gonna pivot this. My sides are not perfectly lined up. Don't worry about that. We can always, that's what clamps are for, to put things into place and secure them. So, clamp. Oh, I need to do this. What am I doing? 
okay? Clamp it to your table. And as I'm clamping, I'm gonna get everything lined up. This is, this is my opportunity to fix everything. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Okay, that looks good. And here we go. Pilot hole one. Screw number one. Pilot hole two. Screw number two. I love doing this stuff with a partner because one person can be drill person and one person can be driver person and you can tag team. But as, as per usual, I am partnerless. Okay, ta-da! So now all of our sides are assembled in that nice pinwheel pattern. And now all we have left to do is to attach this piece to the bottom. It's gonna go like this. Look at that as a perfect fit. It's like we know what we're doing and we measured and cut everything precisely. Ah! So now we are ready to attach this. We need to turn it upside down. And the same thing, I'm gonna clamp to the table. Everything's nice and lined up. And I like to put two screws on each edge. So two, 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 two. Sorry, you're gonna have to watch me do all eight of these, but I'll move as quickly and safely as I can. Okay, so everything's clamped. Let me grab some screws. And here we go. We'll go one here. You'll also notice that I'm not putting any screws too close to any edge. I like to be in a little bit from the edge. I don't want to hit any of these previous screws I've already put in. I also just like to avoid corners because that's a, an area that's prone to cracking. So I'm going to be about here. One. Two. You get into a rhythm, it goes much more smoothly. Three. Four. Now at this point, I know I said that you should put a pilot hole and then put a screw in, but now that everything is so stable, I actually can do the rest of my pilot holes, so that'll go a little faster. I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna go all the way around with my drill. I'm gonna put a hole here and here. Going. Okay, now I'm done with the drill. Whew. Now I have five more screws. Now let's just say that I messed that one up. I didn't, but let's say I'm not happy with it or maybe it came out the side. What should I do? I would reverse the direction on my driver to take the screw out, I'm gonna do the same thing. Lock my bit in place, put my hand on top. Now this is a little counterintuitive. I need to push down so that my bit stays locked into my screw. If I pull, I'm not staying in contact. So lock it in, push, and out came my screw, okay? I'm gonna just put it right back in because it was actually fine. There we go. All right, let's finish this bad boy. Here we go, four more screws, one. like a box look at our beautiful box we're missing one thing which is our top but we're gonna attach this a little bit differently so depending on what you'd like to do with your box you can use hinges I'm gonna use some hinges so that I can open it since this is a donation box you could put a lock on it maybe you have some extra secret journals or something you need to hide from a sibling so you could put a lock on one side I'm also gonna paint it, and I would like to paint all of this before I attach my hinges and such. So, for next time, 
you're gonna see my finished painted box. But in the meantime, for you, think about how you might wanna decorate your box, maybe paint, maybe a wood burner, maybe have a bunch of stickers, make it your own. And then next time, our last episode, we'll talk about hinges and how to actually finish the box with some additional hardware. Great job, see you for our last episode tomorrow.